Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. I wanted to do another video on tips for storytelling and lore because y'all have loved the last few videos that I did and I've loved seeing your comments that give me more ideas as well, both about the storylines you're playing in your game and about like tips to make my storylines better. So let's jump right into the first tip. Tip number one is actually something I thought of during one of my recent videos. I was talking about like different careers and I realized that is a really, really good way to figure out new storylines and lore that you can play with is to just try out different in-game careers that maybe you haven't really tried out before. There are so many careers in this game that are either with just the base game or with very minimal packs. You can have a lot of different options for careers and within each career even if it's not an active career you'll have different daily tasks to complete and depending on the career there's like so many different things that it can have you do and that is just such an easy way to kind of get yourself to do stuff that you haven't really done before in my Winslow legacy Serena is in the social media career and Kiyoshi is a chef even in both of those careers the daily tasks are totally different and as y'all can see in this menu as I'm scrolling through I have a lot of modded careers even if you can't use mods, putting your sim in a career that maybe you just don't play as often will force you to try different things in your game. And also most, if not all, of the in-game careers have different career branches. So even like within the single career, there's multiple paths you can take. And in terms of storytelling and lore, it just gives you a lot of options. You put a sim in the politician career and maybe they go in with the idea of being a charity organizer and doing a lot of good for the community community but then maybe they get too enticed by the power and eventually end up going the politician branch because they want to be powerful you know that's a storyline that's lore obviously that's something like you'll have to put into your game but utilizing different careers is such an easy way to kind of spark that creativity with an athlete career like I could see so many different storylines for these two branches a lot of the fitness influencers that I follow had a background in bodybuilding so I could totally see putting your sim in the bodybuilder branch and then making them kind of like an influencer and using the stuff from get famous to have them make youtube videos and stuff like that or even just like the social media stuff from city living like there's so many routes that you can take it and of course for this tip and for all my tips honestly your own creativity is very important but these are ways that you can really spark that creativity and just like find storylines that might be fun or new or interesting that maybe you haven't really played before my next tip is to either play with different lifespans than you're used to or turn off aging completely so so currently I play with aging completely off but if you're always kind of playing on the normal lifespan it's really easy to just not have time to try out different things and that is both in terms of a career in terms of relationships in terms of if you send your sims to university like the amount of time it takes to complete a university degree in the sims 4 is like the entire young adult lifespan on the normal length so trying out different lifespans or even just turning it off can allow you to have some more time to try out different storylines another thing i want to mention here is that with mc command center you can change the length of each life stage so for example if the long lifespan is too long for you or maybe it's still too short you know i don't like the proportions if that makes sense like i don't like how long the teenager lifespan is in proportion to the young adult lifespan if you can use mods and you want to just kind of customize the lifespan to your own storytelling preferences i would 100 percent recommend that it does take a little bit of setup time. It might take some research just to like figure out what works best for you in terms of durations, but I would recommend trying that out if you can. My next tip is to attend pre-made festivals. And this is very similar to one of the tips I had in my other tips videos, which was to just like utilize holidays in your calendar more. I stand by that. I love using the calendar and adding in holidays as much as possible. In addition to that, go to the pre-made festivals because there are so so many and like a lot of them aren't even on the calendar actually so I have a bunch of custom holidays in here as you can see but I think there are some other festivals that don't show up on the calendar but there's so many festivals in this game like football team sports day they have the cheerleading sports day then they have all the Mount Comoraby festivals like the festival of snow and the festival of light they have the Hanford on Bagley festivals every single weekend I'm pretty sure they have a different one but they have other 
festivals too. All the ones in San Maishuno. I thought they showed up on the calendar, but now that I'm looking at the calendar, it doesn't seem like they do. But they have the Spice Festival, they have the Flea Market, they have the Romance Festival, they have Geek Con. If nothing else, you get a pop-up for them, I'm pretty sure. And then they also have stuff in the university pack if you have that. They have like the robot making thing. I've like forgotten what they're called. They have like spirit days. Basically, <laughs> there's a lot of in-game festivals and things like that that you can just keep an eye out for and go to them. Like another example is they have the esports games and the regular sports games. These are all examples of things that just pop up and are just automatically in the game. And it's a really good way to get your sim just like out of the house, off the lot. Maybe it's something that your sim really enjoys doing and you can make a part of their personality. And for the non-rabbit hole festivals, it's a really good way to meet new sims. My fourth tip is to give your sims hobbies. My go-to hobby, honestly, is having my sims work out. I also really like having my sims knit or cross stitch. Having my sims garden is also really fun. Basically anything that isn't like an actual career, but is something fun that you can kind of make their quote unquote hobby. I think having hobbies in real life is super important. Like you can make gaming a hobby too. Gaming is one of my hobbies in real life. I also love to bake in real life. Like I can give my sims a baking hobby. These are just things that kind of add to your sims personality that you can't really make concrete in game. If you just kind of keep that hobby in mind, then what you can do is like maybe every Saturday or something like that, they have the morning set aside for them to work on their hobby or they do like self-care nights where they will only be working on their hobby. Things like that that just add to the storyline and the personality that you're giving to your sim and just makes the lore of your game that much better. I do want to note that there is a mod where you can give your sims reward traits and it basically makes your sims have hobbies like arts and crafts, fashion and beauty, paranormal, sports, tinkering, all that kind of stuff. It's very very cool. If you do want to make those hobbies more concrete in your game and not just kind of have them in your mind then it's a really really great mod to add to your game. But again like even if you can't download mods, giving your sims a hobby is something that any sims player can do. My last tip for this video is to decorate your sims worlds, not just their homes, their worlds for holidays and for seasons. So I got this idea because obviously in real life it's currently autumn. I love autumn. It's just my absolute favorite time of year. I really have been wanting to decorate my apartment for Halloween, for whatever, just kind of in a fun way. Not even necessarily all out, but a few decorations here and there I think will go a long way. And that got me thinking, why don't I do that? for my sims houses you know if you have seasons and if you have holidays in your game it is so easy to get decorations all you have to do is either go to build mode or you can just pull out the decorations box which i think i have it on this lot yeah i mean i don't think it's accessible <laughs> because i shoved it in the corner but you can rummage for decorations and a few decorations will pop out of the box once you do that it's super fun and i always do it for like my major sim holidays so like for harvest fast for a spooky day for winter fast i pull out the decorations i didn't really start doing it or thinking about doing it for the seasons in general until recently and i realized like it is just such a good way to get more invested in what's going on in your game and the reason i said decorate the world not just your house is because you can so easily just like hop into build mode super quick and other homes around the world and just place down decorations and it'll just feel so immersive. And that can add to lore as well. You know, maybe you have one house that goes all out on decorations. Maybe it's your sim's house, but maybe it's like a neighbor's house that just goes all out on decorations every single year, like for winter fest or for spooky day. I don't know. Oh my God. I'm just trying to record a lore video. Girl, please. How did she do that with a toaster? Anyways, like I was saying, that definitely happens in real life where there's like one house on the street that like goes all out. There was a house in my neighborhood growing up that literally went so all out for Christmas that people would drive to come see it like that's the kind of thing that adds that realism and lore into your game because it's just so like it's just real and it's fun maybe there's a house in your neighborhood who does that or maybe there's a house in your neighborhood that like doesn't decorate and they're kind of like the neighborhood recluse they're not like super social or like make an effort to be really part of the community that way so again there's like so many different ways you can take 
something as simple as decorating your sims home and your sims world with that guys this has been an eventful video even though it was really just meant to be kind of like a yapping video my sim has gone through a lot so i'm gonna go ahead and leave this video here definitely comment any thoughts or ideas or opinions you have down below and i'd especially love to hear any other tips you guys have like i said your guys's tips have helped me enjoy my game even more also if you enjoy this video don't forget to like and subscribe join my discord because i am running my giveaways over there so make sure to join so that you have a chance to win sims 4 packs for new packs that come out also do consider joining my channel as a member for access to special perks and if you are going to be purchasing a new pack anytime soon do consider using my code to support me and with that i will see you later bye guys i was just calling to see if you're free to run away with